Hi everyone, welcome to my video where today we are still solving quadratic equations, but we are solving them by graphing. I have a previous video to this video that's all about the basics of gra graphing a parabola, understanding the shape, what the vertex means, axis of symmetry, all of that. So if you still need more of that review, please take a look at my other quadratics video. Otherwise, get ready to learn the second part of graphing quadratics and learning what it means to solve a quadratic equation by graphing. So here it says on my screen, the solutions to a quadratic function are the roots or zeros of the equation of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, which are the x-intercepts of the function's graph. That's a mouthful. So let me go back and really explain what's going on here. It says the solution to a quadratic function, the same function that we just learned how to graph before, really are the zeros of the equation. Now, notice ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. That would have been that polynomial equation that we learned how to factor from our last chapter. But now we're learning that, hey, if I graph this parabola, where are those zeros? And we have already learned previously that zeros mean to find the x-intercepts. And how do you find the x-intercept? You set y equal to zero. And in this case, in this equation, y is equal to zero. So really what we're going to discover are when we graph an equation, the x-intercepts of the values, okay, the x-intercepts of our parabola are going to be identical as, as if we had um, factored that same polynomial equation to solve it in that way. So take a look with me. I'm going to do some really quick just understanding so you know what I mean by x-intercepts, and then we're going to actually do our graphing to solve. So when you're solving quadratics, quadratic equations by graphing, you can have zero roots, one root, or two roots. And those are our only options right now for quadratics. No roots or zeros mean there are zero times the parabola crosses the x-axis. So this would be an example of two situations where these two parabolas, this upward facing parabola never crosses the x-axis, which means that there are no solutions. And I'm gonna put that null symbol meaning there's no solutions, you wouldn't put the number zero because zero could actually be a solution. And this one, this downward facing parabola also doesn't ever touch the x-axis, so there's no solution. The y-axis, sure, it can touch the y-axis. The graph is always going to touch the y-axis no matter what. But the x-axis is its own thing, and that's how we determine the solutions. The x-axis, that's it. Um, the next one I could have is one solution. So if zero solutions means it crosses the x-axis zero times, then one solution means it crosses the x-axis one time, okay? Now, one solution would be that case where if I gave you a function that looked like this, f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now, remember, to find the x-intercept really means to set y equal to zero, and we know f of x really means zero. So look what would happen here. If I took this function, x squared plus 4x plus 4, and I went ahead and I factored it. Okay, what factor pair of 4 adds up to 4? 1 and 4 or 2 and 2? It would be 2 and 2. And I notice that this is actually a perfect square trinomial, and I only have one solution. If I was to set this equation equal to 0, I would get negative 2 as my solution. And that's actually going to be the case for when we go to graph it. So I'm going to pull up my TI-84 plus CE graphing calculator. Again, the software is free up until um, late 2020 so that you can get your license and you can use the cal graphing calculator software along with it. And I'm going to show you what it would look like if that parabola was to touch the x-axis just at that one point. Okay, so I'm going to take this function now, f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. I'm going to go into my TI-84 um, plus CE software, and I'm going to go ahead and graph this function. x squared plus 4x plus 4, and I'm going to click graph. Notice that this parabola touches the x-axis just at one exact point. This point here is my solution. If I was to click trace and go along the curve, I could see exactly what that point is. I have a whole separate video on how to do um, all the work with the graphing calculator for parabola, so take a look at that. But I can definitely see that it's right at negative 2 and it's at 0. So it's only touching the x-axis at one point at a negative 2. If I looked at these now, this is actually a 
very similar um, parabola to that. This has one solution. This is also at negative two because that's where the parabola is touching the x-axis. And this would be a solution where it's at positive two because it's touching the x-axis at positive two. Again, notice we're not worried about the y-axis at all. Last tab is about having two roots. So two roots would mean that there are two times the parabola crosses the x-axis. So here is where I have that example. Um, if I looked at this carefully, I would see, and I'm going to zoom my screen in just a bit for us, that this parabola touches the x-axis at these two points, these two points here. This one, and that doesn't help. This one, and this one. So this root is at negative 1, and this root is at a positive 2. And notice I put the roots in braces, not parentheses, because if they were in parentheses, then they would look like um, an ordered pair. So now let me give you another example of how I did the factoring from before. Imagine I told you that this parabola was from this function, f of x equals x squared minus x minus 2. And I said to you, okay, well, if I said to you find the zeros, that would mean to set f of x equal to 0, and then we would factor. What numbers multiply to get a negative 2 that add up to get a negative 1? The only factors are 1 and 2. And if I need them to add to get a negative 1, that would mean 2 has to be negative and the 1 has to be positive. A negative 2 and a positive 1 multiply to get negative 2 and they add up to get that negative 1 here. Then I would set each factor equal to 0 and solve. We learned this in our polynomial equation lessons. And those would be my solutions, negative 1, positive 2, which are exactly what I see here crossing the x-axis. So the roots are the same thing as the answers when you solve that polynomial equation. Okay, now we're going to take a look at factoring. And if you watch my other quadratic factoring video, I did problems just like this, so this is now more practice. We're going to go through, calculate our axis of symmetry, our vertex. We're going to fill in the table of values. We're going to graph, but now we also get to name the solutions to the graph, the roots. All right, so... If I have this function, f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 8, I first need to see that my a is 1, my 1 is in front of the x squared, my b is negative 2, my c is negative 8. Here's my formula for axis of symmetry. Negative b over 2a. So it'll be negative, negative 2, over 2 times a, which is 1. A negative, negative 2 is positive 2. 2 over 2 is 1. Okay, so my axis of symmetry is 1. I then take that 1 and I plug it into this function here everywhere I see x. So it's now f of 1 equals 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 8. Remember f of 1 is just function notation, so that stays the whole way through. I just do all my simplifying on the right. 1 squared is 1 2 times 1 is 2 minus 8. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 8. Negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9. So here's my vertex. My vertex is my x value and now my y value. 1, negative 9. I'm going to take that vertex we learned in our previous video. We plug the vertex into the center of our table. And now this 1a, 3a, 5a rule. This would mean, if I look back at my function, I see that my a value is a positive 1. That would mean that I easily fill in my values going plus 1, plus 3. Same thing with the other way, plus 1, plus 3. So x values just get filled in by 1, so I'm going to decrease by 1 and then add 1 as I go down the x column of my table. But then my y values here. I add 1, add 3, so that's my pattern. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. Then negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. And we know that it ends up being symmetric over there on the other side. Now for graphing. I'm just going to zoom my screen out just a smidge so I can see my full graph. Now if I want to go ahead and graph. So I need to set up my x-axis so that I can get down to a negative 9 on my y-axis. So let's think, if I set up my um, x-axis up here, pretty good line, 
can I go down to a negative 9? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I can. My y-axis can be smack dab in the center because I notice my x values are negative 1 to positive 3. So I know that's not going to give me any kind of issues. All right. I'm going to plot my points now. Negative 1, negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, negative 8. 1, negative 9. 2, negative 8. And 3, negative 5. And I notice that I have this parabola here. It's an upwards facing parabola. It should be because my A value is positive. If my A value was negative, it would be the other way. Terrible parabola. Apologize. But I notice I don't know where it's actually touching the x-axis. I want to know my roots, right? Well, think about this. If it's plus 1, plus 3, the next one is plus 5. So what would happen if I added 5 and I continued this pattern? When the x value is negative 2, that means the y value, negative 5 plus 5, is at 0. So negative 2, 0 is actually the next point on my graph. And if I extended it going that way, it would go here. Okay, so now if I wanted to find the next point, it would be 4. If I continued my x's, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. And so 4, 0 is actually my other point here. And look, here are my zeros. My zeros are my x-intercepts. Notice where the x-intercepts are in the table. It's when y is equal to 0. And so those are my roots or my zeros, negative 2 and positive 4. My domain is always all reals. And my range, notice that the graph starts at a negative 9, and it's everything above it. So my range is y is greater than or equal to negative 9. OK, now the next one. f of x equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 9. So my a value is negative 1. My b value is 6. My c is negative 9. Let's go ahead and find our axis of symmetry. So x is equal to negative b over 2 times a, which is negative 1, which becomes negative 6 over negative 2, which is 3. We then take that 3 and we plug it in everywhere we see x. So f of 3 is equal to negative, notice the negatives on the outside, 3 squared plus 6 times 3 minus 9. So f of 3 is equal to I have to do 3 squared first, so it's negative 9. Remember that you square, you do exponents first before you multiply by that negative 1 in front. 6 plus 3 is 18. Negative 9 plus 18 is 9, and 9 minus 9 is 0. So my vertex is actually 3, 0. Where did the vertex go in our table? It goes right in the middle. And now, this 1a, 3a, 5a rule. We look back. The a value is negative 1. When it was positive 1, you do plus 1 plus 3. When it's negative 1, you actually do minus 1 minus 3. So I'm going to first fill in my x values. Again, x values, we just increased by 1s. But now my y values, from here, I'm going to do minus 1 minus 3. Again, from 0, minus 1 minus 3. So if I do that, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. We take the negative 1 and do negative 3. So negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Same thing here. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my graph. I'm going to use the lines just to make my graph better than I did before. Okay, I make my x-axis and my y-axis. I'm going to then go ahead and plot my points. So my x-axis, my y-axis. So 1, negative, oops, my bad, 1, negative 4, we all make mistakes, right? 2, negative 1, 3, 0, 4, negative 1, 5, negative 4. Now this is a good graph because do you see where the root is? Do you see where the graph immediately touches the x-axis? Should. Okay, touches right here. And notice, remember, the x-intercept when y is 0. So 3, 0 is my root. We just put 3. We want to know the x value. My root is at 3. Domain is always all reals. And then notice this graph starts at a y value of 0. And then as everything 
below it. So my range is y is less than or equal to zero. Pretty good. Last practice problem for us today. f of x equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 3. So my a is 2, my b is 4, and my c is 3. Let's do our axis of symmetry. So negative b, so negative 4 over 2 times a, which is 2, which becomes negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. We then go ahead and we plug in the negative 1 in for everywhere we see x. So this is now f of negative 1 equals 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 3. Okay, exponents first, guys. What's negative 1 squared? Positive 1. So this is really saying to do 2 times 1 minus 4. I can go ahead and multiply those together plus 3. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So here's my vertex, negative 1, 1. Where does the vertex go in our table? It goes right in the middle. We fill in our x values by 0, so decrease by 1, add by 1. And now our a value was 2. So if the a value is 1, you do plus 1 plus 3. But if the a value is 2, you multiply these by 2. So it's going to be plus 2 plus 6. So from here, from 1, I'm going to add 2 and then add 6. Add 2, add 6. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 6 is 9. Same thing here. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 6 is 9. Let's go ahead and graph. So I'm going to make an appropriate graph um, so that let me just click this back. I'm going to make an appropriate graph so I can actually fit up to a positive 9 on my y-axis. So I'm going to go pretty low here. And then my x, my y-axis can be pretty centered. That's not a problem. Here's my y-axis. Here's my x-axis. Negative 3, 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, I just made it. Negative 2, 3. Negative 1, 1. 0, 3, 1, 9. Hmm. Look at this graph. It's an upwards facing parabola, which, which makes sense because the a value is positive. But look at my x axis, guys. It doesn't touch it at all. And if it doesn't touch it at all, what does that mean about the roots? There are none. There's no solution. The main is always all reals. And my y axis, my range starts at a positive 1, and it's everything above it. So it's y is greater than or equal to 1. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please replay as much as you possibly need to make sure that you understand it completely. And take a look at my other videos. Thanks, guys. Bye.